Okay, up next we have the Demonic Dragon Summoning deck, which in contrast to the Yokai and Giant Robot deck, features the two remaining worlds, Warner, represented in gold on the left, and Atlas, which is on the right. And these are basically the four main worlds of Gate Ruler, the fifth one, Invasion Dimension, being kind of like a playing a villainous role and is currently only exclusive to the boosters. So Warner on the left tends to follow like European mythology and folklore with a lot of like uh, fantastic beasts and dragons, that kind of stuff. On the right, Atlas, although it's kind of hard to tell from this first unit over here, which is a Jinn of Darkness, is kind of supposed to be a futuristic vision of like Western or the American armed forces. With a few cryptids and strange creatures picked up along the way. Yes, but similar to like the Toyogun, there are a lot of military elements that you will be able to find in Atlas. But anyway, let's get right into this deck starting with the Warner side. And of course, let's start with a description of their ruler. So here, the K11 Knights, unlike the apprentice that we saw earlier, is aimed towards people with more experience in card games and maybe even TCG veterans. Its rule set is very typical of card games where you basically have three energy or mana at the start of the game and a starting hand of two cards. At the start of each of your turns, you untap two of your energy and then you draw two cards, one card if it's the very first turn, and you can summon up to two units every single turn. So from this, you guys can see sort of like the strategic element of like, well, at least you have a hand and a limited amount of resources or energy to manage this time. So there's much more strategic elements embedded here in the Knights compared to the Apprentice. So although it takes more skill and thinking, of course it can become more rewarding depending on how well you manage to play your cards. So that is basically the Knights. Now let's get into the units, starting off with a Dragon Lord, one of the four demonic Dragon Lords. Borvis Most Rex. This is a counter card, and on counter, if your life is at two or less, end the turn. So if your opponent is trying to finish you off and you flip this guy on a damage check, you're gonna shut them down right there. But the interesting thing about this is that in Gate Ruler, there are many ways, well, since there are trap cards which can be activated during your opponent's turn, there are many ways for your opponent to damage you during your own turn as well. So imagine if your opponent damages you during your turn and you flip this guy, your turn is the one that's gonna end, so be careful of that. This card has the Abyss Symphonia ability, which means that if you have an Abyss Summoner on your field, you can basically Abyss Summon this guy, which is a form of special summon, to use Yu-Gi-Oh terminology, from the grave. And the Abyss Symphonia requirements are basically moving 5 cards with the darkness attribute from your grave to the bottom of your deck. Well, more on this later. First of all, if this unit is Abyss Summoned onto the field, destroy one card on the field and then recover one life, and you cannot move this unit into the defense zone, which would be pretty insane because it has 7 defense. So basically, you can play this card normally, but you really want to Abyss Summon it out with Abyss Symphonia in order to trigger that powerful destruction and recovery effect. And here we have our first Abyss Summoner, Druid of the Demonic Dragons at 2 cost with the Abyss Summon ability. So during your main phase, while this card is on the field, you can send it to the grave to Abyss Summon 1 units with Abyss Symphonia from your grave by fulfilling the requirements specified, which as we saw earlier, returning 5 cards with darkness to the bottom of your deck. So that's basically how the Abyss Summon mechanic works, and I hope from this you guys can see that, well, this deck is generally supposed to be a bit more uh, strategic with more advanced mechanics compared to like the almost completely luck-based star deck we saw over there. Death Sarie is a 2 cost weaker dragon but also with Abyss Symphonia which can be Abyss Summoned by returning 2 cards with Darkness from your grave to the bottom of your deck and during the turn this unit is Abyss Summoned it gains Caution which as a reminder allows you to move it to the defense zone at the end of your attack phase. And here we have the Servant of the Demonic Dragons. Tribute to the Darkness, when this unit attacks, you can mill the top card of your deck by sending it to the grave. So as you guys can see, the general strategy of this deck is kind of similar to Light Sworn and Grand Blue from Vanguard, where you basically just want to mill, fill up your grave with the Mighty Dragons with Abyss Symphonia, cards with Darkness Attributes, so that you can basically perform your powerful Abyss Summons. Here we have the zero cost card, Black Knight's Geist. If this card is sent to the grave from the field or your deck, you may mill the top card of your deck. So again, helping you mill those cards, accumulating the Abyss Symphonias. Black Knight Reha is a vanilla. And moving on to the events. Squadron of Darkness. First of all, this card is counter, and on counter, you may take one unit with Abyss Summon from your grave and add it to your hand. Its activation timing is normal, so you have to play during your main phase, kind of like a normal spell card in Yu-Gi-Oh. Mill the top card of your deck, then take one unit with Abyss Summon from your damage zone and add it to your hand. 
Dude, that is pretty insane because not only are you gaining resources, it basically giving you one heal as well. Pretty strong. Absolute barrier. On counter, send this card to the grave. But when used as a normal event, its activation timing is while set when you, yourself, your ruler is being attacked. Render that battle damage zero. So that will probably save your life in certain situations. So four copies of that, which makes sense. It's a pretty useful defensive spell. And it looks like we are ending off with three uh, Jins of Darkness on the left side. On counter, special summon this unit. I see. And of course, uh, just like uh, in Yu-Gi-Oh, uh, although the Knight is only given two normal summons every turn, he can special summon as much as he wants. So, same kind of logic there. Here's our fourth Jin of Darkness. Nosferatu Army. At one cost, it has pretty weak stats, but it has the Undead ability. Where if this card is in your grave, you can basically use up your normal summon and pay the cost to summon this to normal summon this guy from your grave. However, you cannot place him in a defense zone. Alright. Three copies of that, and here we have Johan, another Abyss Summoner, but only at one cost. So a cheaper Abyss Summoner than the Druid of Demonic Dragons that we saw earlier. Of course, four copies of that. Here we have Midas G. Goldberg, which seems to be some sort of businessman. His ability, Merchant of Death, allows you to recover one life when you successfully perform an Abyss Summon. Interesting. Jack the Ripper, a zero-cost unit with the ability From Hell. When this unit destroys an opponent's unit, you can mill two cards from the top of your deck. Okay. Three and four. And basically, uh, these units that have the Owl attribute on the top right, they are basically kind of like uh, famous characters from history and folklore. Which could be real, could be fake. And here we have the zero cost deck R with the ability Dark Core. If this card in your grave is used as material for Abyss Symphonia, it can be treated as two cards worth and its level can be specified for anything between zero to three. So basically, one of the most powerful engine cards of the deck, you definitely want to get this guy in your grave. And here we are starting to see the more of like the Western military influences. Iron Storm. On counter, play this card. Activation timing is instant. Choose one or more of your opponent's units and spread two damage among them. Alright, pretty interesting. Three copies of that. And here we have Win Win, which actually happens to have the legend mark, which means this is a legend card, even though it's just a common. And depending on your ruler, the amount of legend cards you can use differs. But generally, for the rulers we have so far, you can only have one legend card in your deck. Activation timing normal, draw one card, and both you and your opponents can untap two cards in your energy. However, that is only good for your opponent if they are a knight. Imagine if you are a knight and you're an apprentice, you basically benefit, but they don't. So this is how the usage of the more strategic uh, knights can benefit you more than your opponent when you're just relying on luck as the apprentice. And here we have Make a Killing. Activation timing is while this card is set when your opponent receives damage. Discard one card with the darkness attribute from your hand and then draw two cards. Okay, so by hurting your enemy, you benefit more and these cards which have no abilities whatsoever are basically just used to represent the three energy you have as the knight. So on your field, it will kind of look like this and then when you pay the cost of summon units, you'll tap them and at the start of your turn, you untap them like this. So, I mean, I just kind of like the fact that they are specially designed energy cards just for the game. Very cool. And that'll be all for the Demonic Dragon Summoning deck. So that was a brief glimpse of Gate Ruler. I also have the box of the first booster, which I'll be opening probably around the end of next week. When I get an opportunity, I do want to at least fill maybe a fight between these two starter decks for you guys, so you guys can get a better grasp of how the game is played. I'll probably be keeping an eye on Gate Ruler for a while, because although it's very experimental, and many people in Japan have already criticized the game for having a lot of luck in its elements, especially for apprentice users, but I do see a lot of love put into the game, and I think it has a lot of potential as well, depending on how the game develops further from here on out. Will this game survive and succeed? Well, only time will tell, but I hope that these videos have, at the very least, piqued your interest somewhat in Gate Ruler, and I'll see you guys, perhaps, in the next Gate Ruler video.